My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 294. Please turn to it. Page 294 and today is our lesson number 250. Let's see what we have here. This is problem number 4.6.3 on page 294. 4.6.3 and the graph that we see in front of us in front of us is what is known as a scatter plot. It is known as a it's a bit here. That's what we call it. And scatter plot is a past as opposed to a pie chart or a regular graph or some other graph. This is called a scatter plot. The very first question that they're asking here, there are two parts to this problem. The very first part they're asking here is how many of the 50 cyclists, how many of the 50 bicyclists that they're depicting on the on the scatter plot had both the training index of less than 50 and the finishing time of four and a half hours. Now, the only reason why you would get this question wrong, or why anybody would get this question, this particular question wrong, or this type of question wrong, is carelessness. That's the only reason. Because the problem itself is very straightforward, very simple. You just have to make sure that you pay attention and you don't miscount something, that's all. So let me, let me reproduce the graph that they give us here. And we are interested uh, less than 50, training index of less than 50, and the time of less than four and a half hour. So we're just going to concentrate on that segment of the graph, and, and we're, just, we're just going to ignore the rest of the information, because uh, it doesn't interest us. So less than four and a half hours. It begins at three. So here we have three, three and a half, four, and four and a half. There you go. And so it's going to go like this. Then we are interested in less than 50. So let's put down less than 50 here. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. That's our 50 here. 40, 30, 20, and 10. And if you look at the graph carefully, you will see that the graph actually goes precisely at the intersection of 4.5 and 50. 4.5 and 50. It doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to be exact, obviously accurate, 100%, but as long as you're reasonable. So 4.5 and 50, the graph actually goes through this point here. What I'm going to do now is to erase this part, so we have room here. And this is what our graph actually looks like. It goes something like this. The graph that they're depicting, it goes something like this. The question is, how many points do you see that lie in this region here, the region that we just that we just uh, pointed out here, this region. This is our this is our area of interest. The the finishing time has to be less than four hours, and the training training amount has to be an index of less than fifty. So anything that lies in this region, and all we have to do is count how many points there are. So let's do that one by one. I'm going to change the color now. Okay, just read the, look at the graph with me. You must have the book in front of you, otherwise obviously you cannot follow anything as I always tell you. The very first point that I see is between 30 and 40 at 3.5, very close to 3.5, between 30 and 40, somewhere here at this corner. So that's, that's the first point I notice. Then I see another one uh, around the same height, around very close to 3.5 hours, at very close to 50, right here. So that's two so far. And then in the same cell, I see between 40 and 50, I see very close to 4. Between 40 and 50, I see very close to 4, somewhere here. That's 3 so far. And then, again, you have to look, uh, be looking at the graph with me, obviously. And then we, I see 4 and a half there, sorry, are they talking about? How many? Less than 50 and 4 and a half. Less than 50. And four and a half. So we took care of those two. We took care of that one. Now I see another one, which is right above it, above ab uh, between four and four and a half, right above this point, right here. 
So that's four so far. I just want to make sure that I do not miss anything. Um, and then finally, there is one more. If you look closely, there is one more between between 30 and 40, very close to 4.5. Between 30 and 40, very close to 4.5. That's it, we're done. Those are the five points that we see there. Those are the only five points uh, that is of interest to us. Now, let's see, one more time, I just want to make sure that my, my points look somewhere, somewhere reasonably close to what they are. That's it, there are five of them. That's all there is. The answer is five. The answer is five. Let's do the next one, shall we? So there's not much here to learn. You just have to, as I said, take your time and make sure that you don't miscount something. That's why people get it wrong. Either they end up counting one too many or one too few. Other than the fact of those people who are in the wrong region to begin with, which is a different story in itself. You just have to pay attention to what is being asked. It has to be less than four and a half hours of finishing time. And the training index, we were told, has to be less than 50. Number two. It says, what percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclers What percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclists had training index of, of less than 90? Again, the very first thing we need to do here is to actually figure out before we worry about how many, what percentage, uh, uh, what percentage of these ten people, the ten fastest bicyclists, the ten people who finished in the lowest amount of time in this race, the first ten that is, what percentage of those had a training index of less than 90? Before we worry about that part, we have to first ask ourselves, who are these ten people? We have to locate them on the graph. So let's do that. Let's do that. And since we are looking for the ten fastest bicyclists. Obviously, we're going to start with 3.0 and then we're going to go to 3.5 if we have to and so forth. But we are working, we are working in the lower region, around, around 3 hours, maybe 3.5 hours and that's it. That's, what, that's the only thing that interests us. So here's our graph. So I'm going to put a 3 here. I'm going to put 3.5 here and a 4 here. And that's all that is, that is of interest to us. That is all that we are interested in. And we're looking for below 90, uh, below, 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 nine, below 90, so let's do that here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, this is the 100. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. Now, let's see where our graph actually lies. So we're going to have to now, we're we'll, we'll now going to plot the graph. Let's see if I can find any point at all that, uh, that, that, is, of, uh, that, that is handy. So I see uh, it ends at, uh, between 3 and 3.5, it ends at 100. So 100 is right here. It, the graph ends right here somewhere. And... Let's look at one more point around 4, on the 4, oh there you go, it, if you look at the graph carefully you will see that the graph goes through the intersection of the, the coordinates are going to be 70 and, and 4 hours, 70 and 4 hours, 70 and 4 hours is right here. So this is our graph, this is what, this is what we are interested in, this is our graph, it shouldn't go above 100, 100 is where it ends. Okay, And these, these points that I showed here in the circle there, those are, not, those are not the bicyclists, those are just, we, we, I was just trying to locate two points on the graph so that we can actually plot the graph. So that's your graph. We're not looking at the entire graph because we're not interested in the entire graph. We're only interested in the, in the 10 fastest bicyclists. 10 fastest bicyclists, if you look carefully, I see three of them in the, in the, in the cell between 80 and 90. They are between 3 and 3.5 three and hours. 3 and 3.5 three and hours between 80 and 90. Between 80 and 90, I see three of them, like this. One, two and three. I'm going to erase those two points 
or perhaps I can show them differently so that we can differentiate between, between the bicyclist and the two points that we are trying to locate. There we go. So that was, that was the point that it went through and it goes through this point here. And that was our graph. So I'm using this, this thing here to represent the bicyclist. So we located three of them here. Those were, those were very, uh, th th three very fast bicyclists here. And there are three more, if you look closely, there are three more who finished between three and a half, between three and three and a half hours, between 90 and 100, between 90 and 100, between three and three and a half hours. I see two of them right here. And then I see one person who is up here somewhere. So that's six so far. So those are the six fastest bicyclists. We need to locate four more. We need to look at four more because we because we are interested in the ten fastest bicyclists. So what it what it tells us, what the graph tells us is that out of the ten fastest bicyclists, the ten people who finished in the shortest amount of time, six of them in fact managed to finish it in less than three and a half hours, and the other four finished it just above three point five hours, three and a half hours, and they are located at between thirty and forty, between thirty and forty, at thirty and forty. I see one right here. I see another one between 40 and 50, between 40 and 50, I see one right here, That's, he's very fast, he's very close to three and a half hours, and then I see two more, between 70 and 80, between 70 and 80, there is one right here, and then there is one more, we're, uh, we're looking for somebody who finished very close to three and a half hours, not quite three and a half hours, a little bit more than three and a half hours, but very close to it, damn close to it, and I see another one, and the guy who finished between 80 and 90 here, the training index of 80 and 90, right above the graph, 80 and 90, right above the graph, right here somewhere, voila, that should do it. Those are our 10 people, those are our 10 people, the 10 bicyclists, who managed to finish this uh, 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 race in the shortest amount of time, that is, that is three and a half hours or just slightly above it. All the other people had far more, uh, took far more than three and a half hours significantly more than three and a half hours. These are the ten fastest ones. Now the question is, out of these ten fastest ones, what proportion do you, uh, what proportion do you see here who had trainings, uh, I don't know if I should say trainings or training, singular or plural, uh, of uh, more than 90 uh, on our index. Let's find out. 90 is right here. Nineties. 90 of course is right here. And I see three people. One, Two, three. Out of this, out of these ten people, out of these ten people, three of them actually had an the training index of over ninety, and that's what it's asking. What percentage of the ten fastest, what percentage of the ten fastest bicyclists had training index of less than ninety? Three of them had more than ninety, so it's seven out of ten, or seventy percent. That's it. That's all there is. Seventy percent of the ten fastest bicyclists has a training index of less than 90. Let's move on. I'm going to do the next one now on the, on the following page, or the one that deals with Venn diagram 4.6.4. But in the meantime, I'm going to get out of the frame for about 10 seconds. I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. So 10 point, whatever it was, so 4.6.4, 4. the one dealing with the Venn diagram on page 295. On page 295. That's it. We are done with this one. Again, one more time, a recapitulation of what we just said. Three people that you see there had the training index of more than 90. This is this is the this is the break off for the 90. Let me put it in a different color here. This is where we are showing 90. So this is the break off for 90. And of the 10 fastest people, these three people, of the 10 fastest. These three actually had to train the most. They had a training index of more than 90 out of 10. Uh, out of 10, therefore, 70% of people who had a training of less than 90. Next one, Venn diagram. Let's see what we're given here. We are told that we have altogether 250 travelers total. We have a total of 250, and then we have Africa, we are told, 
93 people went to Africa. We have total of 250, 93 people went to Africa. We are also told that 155 people went to Asia. 155 people went to Asia. We are also shown in the picture the intersection of the two right here, which tells us that 70 people went to both Asia and Africa. Let's see what the first question is asking. No, this one also only has two parts. Can be oh, it has three parts actually. Doesn't matter. Uh, how many people surveyed have traveled to Africa but not Asia? How many people traveled to Africa but not Asia? Well, 93 people went to 93 people went to Africa of which of which 70 also went to Asia as we can see here 70 is the common area here out of this 93 70 also went to Asia so how many people went uh, the question is how many people went only to Africa how many went only to Africa I believe that's what they're asking. How many, how many of the travelers surveyed have traveled to Africa but not to Asia? Well, there you go. How many people went only to Africa? The answer is 93 people went to Africa and 70 of those 90, 70 of those 90 also went to Asia. So this is Africa. Total. And this is also went to Asia. So, 23 people went only to Africa. Of course, you're making too much fuss about the whole thing. It's very obvious here. It's 93 is the total. 70 is the is, is they went, went to both people. 70 is the common element there. 70 are the, is are the number of people who went to both of these continents. So it's 93 minus 70, which is 23. Let's go to part B. Part B says, how many of the travelers surveyed have traveled to at least one of the two continents? How many traveled to, how many traveled to at least, this is a tricky one, at least one of the two continents. Well, we know Africa, we know 93 people went to Africa, we are told here. We are also told that 155 percent went into Asia. It comes out to be 248. And if you stop at that, you will get the answer wrong. Because out of those 248 people that you see there, 93 people who went to Africa and 155 people who went to Asia, out of these people, 70 people went to both Asia and Africa, and therefore these people are double counted. These 70 people are first counted, these 70 people are first counted as part of this group, part of this 93 people who went to Africa, and the same 70 people are again counted again of 155 people who went to Asia. They are double counted, so we need to subtract the 70. 70 is being double counted. It's being double counted because they went to both. So that's it. 8, 14 minus 77. The answer is 178 people. 178 people went to at least one of these two continents out of 250. They could have made the problem even more complicated by asking you what percentage of the total travelers went to at least one of the two continents 
in which case you would have to do one more step where we would, we would, have, div we would have divided 178 by 250 to figure out the percentage. Or they could have said approximately what percentage. So if they say approximately what percentage of people went to at least one of, one of these two continents, then the percentage would have been approximately, this is approximately 180 over 250. So we drop out and we have 18 over 25. Doesn't actually get us anywhere. Well, actually it does get us anywhere actually. Keep listening, okay? So I changed the problem a little bit. Now, now I, 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 we, we modified the question. The question was, uh, the question originally asked you how many people went to at least one of the two continents. What I'm asking you here is what percentage approximately, I'm using the word approximately, okay, that's the operative word, approximately what percentage of the people went to at least one of these two continents out of the total of 250 travelers. And of course they don't have to say the last part in the problem, the last part being out of the total of 250 travelers, you should know that there are a total of 250 travelers here. The question is very straightforward, what percentage of these travelers went to at least one of these two continents, approximately, approximately what percentage? And in that case the answer would be 178. 178 divided by 250, 178 divided by 250, which is approximately same as 180 divided by 250, 180 divided by 250, and zero drops out, and now we end up at 18 over 25. Let's multiply top and bottom by four, and that gives us the 100 at the bottom. That 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 will represent our percentage, and that's it. So 18 times four is the answer. 20 times four is 80, so it's 72 percent. 72 percent, approximately. Approximately 72% of the travelers went to at least one of those two continents out of the total group of 250. Let's do part C. What does part C say? How many of the travelers surveyed have traveled to neither, neither to Africa nor Asia? All right. How many traveled to neither? How many went to? Neither. This is part C. So we know that out of a total of 250, 72, 72 went, or rather 178, 178. 178, we found that out in the previous part, that 178 went to Asia or Africa. 178 people went to Asia or Africa, and there are a total of 250. So 250 divided by 178, whatever that works out to be, is 2, 14 minus 7 is 7, 72. 72 went to neither Asia nor Africa. They were tourists, but they did not bother to go either go to either of these two continents out of this 200, uh, out of this uh, group of 250 tourists. And that was it. 72 people did not go to either of these continents. I will see you tomorrow where we will continue. Now here's the plan. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to quickly tell you if you turn the page, if you turn the page, you will see the data analysis data analysis exercises, and those are very important questions. Those are those are those are very useful questions to practice on. And I'm going to quickly give you the day numbers where you can find a solution to these problems. These problems have already been done. There was. What happened was that there were few, I don't know how it happened, but as I was going through problems after problems, uh, there were few that I inadvertently skipped here and there, and that's, those are the ones that I'm doing right now. But day number 182, data analysis exercise, data analysis exercises, that you see on page number 296 through that you see on page 296 you will find a solution to those on day number 182 through 200 through 200
For example, the very first problem that you see in the data analysis exercise is there on page 296, so it's, on, it's, it's something that I did on day number 182, and then question number 2 was 182, uh, 183, and so on and so forth. And there were some extra problems that I did here and there, but they are all there. And those, it is imperative, it is important, it is crucial, it is vital that you work through all of these exercises. These are new, these are new, a whole bunch of these are new concepts that simply did not exist in the old GRE. Old GRE did not emphasize the statistical portion of, of the exam that much. Old GRE had few questions here and there dealing with very simple concept of probability and that was it. The revised GRE has a far more emphasis on the statistical concepts that you see here, the data analysis as they call it. Uh, there are a whole bunch of concepts here that simply did not exist before at all. So you're not going to find any material in the old uh, GRE books because uh, they simply didn't ask questions on these concepts. These, these questions you will only find in the new GRE book. This, old, this book that I'm holding in my hand is the old GRE book, the 10th edition. And these questions that you see on page 296 and 297, you're not going to find any of these questions in the old book because, as I said, they, they, they were not uh, testing you on those concepts before, but now they are. And the solutions are there, as I said. Just type in, uh, just type in revised, revised GRE math, uh, day 182, and it will pop right up. Okay. I will see you tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, starting from, uh, starting from day number 251, what I'm going to do is to redo all the problems. I'm going to redo, well, I should, shouldn't say all of them, but I plan to, uh, I plan to redo all the problems. Or I plan to redo the problems that, are, that, that we started a long time ago from day one, beginning on page 110. And I want to redo them because I get several complaints, several emails from the people that I, I, I take too long and I, I, I was going at a too slow a pace. So I'm going to redo them at a faster pace starting tomorrow on, page, on day number 251. All the problems from, day number, from, from page number 110. Okay, bye now.